Hi, this is Damon Tordini with Hawkridge Systems, and today we're going to be talking about the frequency study in SolidWorks Simulation Professional. If you're a user of SolidWorks, you're probably aware that we have some simulation capabilities built directly into the program. For example, the ability to run a stress analysis on any model that you've created in SolidWorks. Here I have an aluminum mounting bracket for the motor for a pulley system which I want to check to make sure is not going to have excessive stress just from the weight of the motor hanging off the side of it. I've already run a stress analysis on a simplified version of this model using the linear static analysis capability which can be found in SolidWorks Premium or higher packages. Here I've discounted the motor because I've only concerned with the weight of that part and not the stresses inside the motor which has already been designed by a third party. In my stress analysis, I've already found that the factor of safety from the weight of the motor is well above our design requirement at about 3.7. So that I know in this product, the stress from the weight of the motor is not going to be the cause of a failure in the product. However, looking at the requirements I've been given for the design of this part, I know that mere stress is not the only issue I need to consider. This motor is likely to vibrate and spin at a rate of about 6,000 RPM, which equates to 100 Hz. So I need to make sure that I'm not going to encounter any potential resonant frequency issues where there might be a natural mode at that frequency, which could be excited by an imbalance in the motor while it spins. To check for this, I need to use the frequency study, which is available in Simulation Professional. When I go into the frequency analysis, you'll see that the setup for the study tree is very similar to the stress analysis that you may already be familiar with. We still apply fixtures in the same way to the mounting holes on the bottom of the bracket. We can still use the remote mass capability to account for the weight of the motor even though we've excluded it from the 3D model in this simulation. And all of the parts and materials are applied as well. In fact, simulation setup conditions can be dragged and dropped from one study to another to save setup time. Before I run the analysis, the only options I need to consider are how many natural frequencies I want to calculate, which are inherent to any design based on the materials and the geometry. Here I'm going to check for what the first five frequencies are in this product. Since these frequencies aren't related to the actual loading conditions, I don't have to define anything related to the imbalance in the motor or how fast that motor might be vibrating in a particular circumstance. When I run the analysis, which will take approximately the same amount of time as a stress analysis in most cases, I'm presented with plots showing the approximate mode shape at each natural frequency. For example, the first mode here is at approximately 93 hertz. I can animate these mode shapes, and I can also see a list showing what all of the resonant frequencies of my design are, which I have requested. My design requirement in this case is to not have a natural frequency below 100 Hz, so I need to modify my design to push the first mode shape higher than the existing value of about 93 Hz. Here I can switch to a modified version of the bracket where I've added some gussets at the bottom which should resist the motion of that first natural mode. We can of course run this analysis again and check the first mode shape a second time and in the modified design see that we've been able to increase the frequency of that first mode to about 102 Hz beyond the requirement of 100. By analyzing another aspect of this product in SolidWorks Simulation Professional I've noticed a major design change was needed and saved myself a wasted prototype, as well as a potential headache down the road. 